Hello, um, good morning, good evening, good afternoon, depending on where you are, what time you're looking at this. Uh, you can, can you see a, a, a sort of sadness on my, on my face? That's because, you know, um, we are on week eight. Unbelievable, right? Uh, I, I, you know, the, 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 the nice thing about a journey is that when we start the journey, we want the journey to end. But when the journey actually ends, we are not very happy. So what a, what a contradiction in, in, in thinking, right? So we are on week eight and um, I'm sure you enjoyed week seven. Um, the, the project by Shakuntala, uh, you know, there's so much of passion that she put into it. I'm sure every one of you is, uh, is going to be as passionate as uh, she was in, in expressing her project. Um, it's, I think, I'm not sure, you know, many times we talk about the word passion, right? I'm not very sure uh, where that word really comes from. I think passion really comes from self-belief, saying what I am doing, I don't know whether it's right or wrong, but whatever I'm doing, I've put my entire heart into it. I think that could be, um, you know, passion, definition of passion and all that. We also started learning about creative thinking. We also learned, um, um, we learned to understand that creativity is deliberate, right? In a sense, um, you, you, cannot, you cannot expect to be creative when you're walking, when you're, uh, you know, talking to somebody, when you're sleeping. Creativity is not like that. Creativity is a very definite set of, of deliberate activities that you, that you do. You go from problem definition to problem, uh, problem, uh, you know, solution of the problem. We saw all the steps. We said uh, you define the problem. You look for information on the problem, which is critical. Uh, we we uh, redefine the problem. We try and generate as many ideas as we can. We um, we choose one or two ideas. And then we look at the difficulty in the idea and then we try to overcome the difficulty by what is called shaping the idea. And then we finally go towards implementing the idea. And we now understand that, that, um, that you cannot call yourself creative unless you have actually implemented the idea, which is one of the, one of the, uh, uh, angst that I have as far as the biomimicry course is concerned, because I'm saying that many of these ideas that you're going to, that you're going to come up with have to be implemented. So one of the, I, I am, I am working with my colleagues uh, at uh, IIT Madras to find out if we can create some sort of a lab in which we can actually, the promising ideas, can we actually start prototyping them and all that, because the joy of creating something actually is in seeing that creative, um, the, the creative endeavor result in something, right? Something very tangible that you can touch, feel and all that. Otherwise, ideas are always so easy to, to, to do. So that's what we saw in, in week seven. Um, week eight, week eight is a concluding week. So which means that we will do all the necessary uh, things to conclude this. I have lots of more stuff to talk about on creativity and uh, we'll also give you some tools for try, trying to help you understand how you can take your thoughts further. So um, I'm, I'm happy that we have come this far. I'm happy that uh, we have over the last seven weeks, we have, we have met each other, we have befriended each other and we, we are hoping that, that we will go on to Biomimicry 2.0 and 3.0 and 4.0 and more and more biomimic. You, oh, I forgot to ask, you know, tell you. Many of you now at the end, at the end of week eight, many of you should just go ahead and start teaching biomimicry. And write to us if you want, if you have, if you have any, uh, you know, if you need any help. Saying that, just call up your your school that you that you that you studied in or your children's school and talk to the principal and say. Can I come and lecture the students on biomimicry? Just ask for permission. 99 out of 100 times, the principal is going to be overjoyed in hearing that someone 
wants to come and actually speak to the kids on biomimicry. And when you speak to the kids on biomimicry, what will you speak? You don't have to make it complicated and things like that. You can talk to them about the spirit of biomimicry as to what it really is, which is about the future, about transformative innovation, about designing the, designing the way nature designs, about sustainability, about environmental care, right? If you can make every one of those children listen to you, and at the end of your session, if every one of those kids can actually start to say, after I listen to this person, I have started to respect nature as my teacher. Every time I look at a tree, I am learning something. And therefore, what I have found is a new teacher called nature. If you can do this much, then I think you probably have started on your life's purpose. So this is what it is. Week 8, with a lot of interesting things for you. But I just thought I'll start it off on a, on a happy stroke, sad note. Because, um, of course, our, our, our paths will meet. But it, it, it's nice that we spent so much of time together with each other. The, the purpose of something, right? Why we do what we do is always something that we must examine. So I have for you, I have for you something that most of you would already have seen. But can we connect what we are going to learn to creativity? And can we, can we discuss creativity in the context of what we are going to learn? Any guesses on what we are going to learn? It's shaped like a triangle. Anyone? It's called the dash hierarchy of needs. Yes, I think most of you are guessing it. It's called the Maslow's hierarchy of needs. So that's what it is. Maslow's hierarchy of needs. If you're wondering why I have brought in Maslow in a biomimicry program where we are speaking about creativity, then I think many of you have probably started to understand why. Let's just look at Maslow. I'm not going to get deep into Maslow. I am using Maslow's hierarchy of needs in order for us to understand the purpose of creativity and when we use creativity. That's the reason, right? There's also a lovely uh, video that you must watch. It really brings into focus whatever we are learning. You know, so because the video enhances your learning, that's it. So let's look at this triangle. What are we, what are we, what are we asking? We are asking the purpose of creativity. We are asking, we are asking one more very important question. We are asking when do we use creativity or why do we use creativity? When do we use creativity? Why do we use creativity? But at the, at the outset, I want to say that biomimicry is also an aspect of creativity. If you had a canvas, if you had the canvas of creativity, then you will naturally include biomimicry because anything that takes you from problem definition to problem solution has to have an aspect of creativity. And the biomimicry process is a brilliant way to go from problem definition to problem solution. Now, the question is when? When do we use creativity? Not when do we use biomimicry? When do we use creativity in the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? But what is the Maslow's hierarchy of needs? Very simply explained, Maslow says that all of us have five needs. The first need is the physiological need, the, the food, water, uh, clothing, rest and all that. And I'm sure every one of us will agree with that because none of you will be here listening to me now if you're hungry or if you have not rested enough. And if you're very hungry now, you will probably pause the video, go eat and come back. So it's well established that the physiological need is at the bottom of the, of the, of the pyramid and we all need to satisfy that need, right? Now, the question for us is, is creativity necessary for that? Of course it's necessary, right? I mean, even, even at, the, at, the, at the basis need of, of our needs, we need to create ways to look for food, look for warmth, look for rest. All animals do that. All organisms do that. There is no difference at all. And most of the time in our lives, we do several things 
we, we, we even get a job and things like that because we want to satisfy that need. So physiological need. Safety need, security and safety. That's a second need, very important need. I still remember when I was working in TCS, several times I used to get frustrated by the work and I wanted to resign, I wanted to leave, but immediately the question of security will come in my mind, saying what will happen to my family if I leave. So there is, there is this security that we hold on to and safety, of course, you know, we keep telling each other, be careful, be careful, don't get into trouble. Go to... Why do we do that? Because there is this need to be safe. And is, is creativity needed for these two? Of course it is, right? So I will, I, will, I will use all my creativity to see to it that I remain in the job because I don't want to lose my job. And therefore, I will do everything possible. I will use all the creativity I have in order to remain in that job. Safety naturally. When I'm going out in a dark road, uh, when I'm coming back from the airport, sometimes I will call my friend and tell her, you know, therefore I'll, I, I, will, I will think of creative ways of being safe. I will not speak too much to the driver or I'll speak. I don't know so many things that we do in order to remain safe, right? Belongingness and love. I don't need to talk to you about this. Every one of us needs to be loved. Every one of us needs to have someone to love, right? So... We, we, we get onto LinkedIn, we get onto Facebook, we, we make friends, we join clubs. And again, we use creativity there. We try to find out how, how we can use our creativity in order to, in order to be loved. Right? Many times we, we, we feel that we're not being loved and we use all our creativity to remain in love. And that's a very, very powerful need for all of us. Esteem needs, prestige, feeling of accomplishment. Is creativity needed? Of course, yes, because once you have once you have accomplished something, you want to stay there, right? You don't want to keep on sliding down. And finally, of course, self-actualization, which is achieving one's potential. That's not so such a popular need because most people, I don't know whether they even go up to that, but I'm sure those people like Einstein and all that who have actually reached that stage surely must have used creativity. I just for me, for me personally, the Maslow's hierarchy of needs helps me understand the power, the need for creativity, which is why I wanted to, I wanted to share this with you. One of, one of the insights I got while I was doing Maslow some time ago was that if you look at biomimicry, the need for biomimicry, and the way I'm, I'm giving you some hints now, the need for biomimicry, and, the, and this is my opinion, the need for biomimicry in the context of where the earth is heading right now, which need do you think biomimicry is satisfying? According to me, biomimicry is going back to physiological needs. Because 30, 40, 50 years from now, we are going to be really looking for food because food is getting destroyed in floods and things like that. Water is not going to be available. Already there is so much of scarcity of water. Warmth, countries are getting colder and colder and colder. Right? And suddenly you find, if you go back to what we learned about the purpose of biomimicry, you will find biomimicry leads to transformative innovation. That if you look at the beetle, the Nami beetle, you know that there is a way nature makes water which means that if we don't have water today, because of the way we are making water today, then we we'll probably look at nature to find out how we, can, how we can get water. Sounds simplistic, but if you really look at it, the logic is, you cannot beat the logic because, because right now, many times we are afraid that our physiological needs are not being met because of the way we, 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 have, we, have, we have treated the earth. So look at the Maslow hierarchy of needs. Write to us about your opinions. I just wanted to introduce the Maslow hierarchy of needs to help you understand how important it is to keep your creativity at a high level constantly and tell yourself that there is use for your creativity at every one of these needs.